Well, welcome to Maker 9601, a, um, I don't know, random, occasional uh, web series about the makerspace movement around the world, about makers, about the uh, fascinating projects they're working on, and about some of the cool technologies that they're employing uh, in the spaces and in their own workshops. Uh, today we're going to look at part two of a two-part uh, series, two-part interview I did with Mara Hitner from uh, Matter Hackers. Matter Hackers is a large supplier of 3D printing equipment and other uh, manufacturing, micro-manufacturing equipment uh, here in the United States. And, uh, and uh, really, uh, the first part of the interview was, was I thought, fascinating. Uh, you know, in addition to talking about the, the products that uh, um, and services that um, that Matter Hackers provides, uh, Mara also uh, suggested some strategies for how uh, beginning makerspaces can, might uh, might get into um, into the 3D printing world for uh, relatively short money. Well, um, when I got back to the United States in March, and I'd been in, in Europe for several months, um, I uh, you know, came across the, uh, it was early March, and I, I came across news that was quite disturbing early on that uh, people who were working in hospitals didn't have access to um, to personal protective equipment, to filter masks, to face shields, and to other, other personal protective equipment. And it turned out that the supply chain had kind of collapsed for this, that, you know, because nobody was expecting that everybody in the world would want to wear a mask any time they were in public, um, that um, the mass manufacturing and face shield manufacturing um, stuff was just not happening. The, the companies weren't gearing up fast enough, and as a result, uh, people who worked in hospitals who needed to protect themselves from uh, from the uh, from the virus or protect the people who worked in hospitals with patients undergoing surgery, for example, or other medical procedures uh, didn't have the, uh, the equipment to protect those patients. So it was, a, it was a huge problem, and it continues to be a problem in many cases. Uh, makerspaces and makers around the world uh, stepped up to, uh, to manufacture uh, this equipment on their sewing machines, on their 3D printers, on their laser cutters, on their vacuum formers, and um, and made a significant impact, a huge impact uh, on the health and safety of their communities. Uh, now there have been several efforts uh, during this time to coordinate this work and the uh, company that that uh, Mara works for, Matter Hackers, uh, was kind of uniquely positioned because they had great mailing lists, <laughs> great contact information for lots of people who had uh, 3D printers in their makerspaces, in their homes, in their uh, schools, colleges, universities, and, and so on. Uh, and, uh, and Matter Hackers uh, put together a, a kind of a coordinating effort for this, and we'll hear more about that from, uh, from Mara in just a second. Uh, I do want to say that uh, there are other efforts uh, in this country and elsewhere uh, for um, for coordinating this, uh, for deciding what's the right equipment to make and use, um, and um, I will put some links uh, to some of those other efforts at the end of this video. I hope that wherever you are, you're staying safe. I'm going to be away from keyboard for a sh little bit, a week or two, um, but I look forward to uh, to more uh, more web goodness in the future and to. Uh, to building more cool stuff in the in the spaces that I that I participate in. All right. Well, without further ado, from Matter Hackers in California, Mayor Hitner. You know, the pandemic has has um, you know slammed all of us in different ways, and um, in some cases for the better, <laughs> but in most cases it's been pretty awful, and um, it's changed a lot this year, uh, especially for. Uh, for nonprofits and NGOs like Makerspaces, um, in many communities and most communities across the country, uh, Makerspaces have canceled their in-person classes. Some of them have pivoted to online classes. Um, they've limited access to their their workshops, uh, to their workspaces. But most important is that many of them have pivoted from um, from being like communities of tinkerers. I mean, seriously, or or you know, budding entrepreneurs or, or artists or hobbyists uh, to becoming micro factories 
for uh, building PPE. I mean, that's been one of the silver linings, I think, of, of COVID. And, you know, I wish it was all under better circumstances. But the community, the additive manufacturing and 3D printing community just really banded together, found a problem, figured out how to solve it. And then just with the open source nature of 3D printing, things got designed, they got iterated on, and then everybody said, okay, the, you know, National Institute of Health has given these particular designs their stamp of approval, everybody go. Um, and it's just been amazing to, to watch. From Matter Hacker's perspective, we started, uh, back in March, we started the Maker Response Hub. And it was honestly started because like we have clients that are hospitals. You know, like a lot of radiology departments especially have 3D printers and they make models, um, you know, pre-surgical models before they go in and do surgeries. And so I was speaking with one of my hospitals um, and they said, yeah, you know, we're, we're, I'm totally buried. I'm trying to print these face shields for everybody. I don't have enough capacity. Like, do you know anyone with the 3D printer that can help? And I'm like, uh, I know where a lot of 3D printers are. <laughs> Um, so at first we started kind of hand matching, you know, hospitals with maker spaces to, you know, make sure that their needs got met, but it just became to the point where we, um, we started the maker response hub, which is actually still active. It's matterhackers.com slash COVID-19. Sure. And, um, we, there were over 5,000 volunteers that signed up saying that they had a 3d printer and they could help across the country. It was combined over 14,000 3D printers that said, yes, I would like to help. Yeah. And so we were able to, we basically just told everybody to 3D print um, the, the 3D work stand model of the visor, had them ship it to one of our, um, to the Matter Hackers um, warehouse. And then we kind of unboxed their stuff and reboxed it into boxes of 200 to ship out. We shipped out like somewhere around 75,000 um, pieces. But from donations from all over the country, from maker spaces, from schools, clients of ours that had um, the lighting company called Gantry up north in San Francisco, and they have 100 3D printers that they use to make their lamps. And they were shut down because of COVID. So they just uploaded a new file and started 3D. They were doing 350 shields a day. It was incredible. So what you're talking about is like this, um, it was the first real demonstration of what we've been talking about forever, which has been a distribute, a localized distributed manufacturing model where anybody that has these very accessible machines can easily pivot for emergency response. And I think that, um, you know, Agile man, I call it agile manufacturing. Maybe there's a better word for it, but but uh, but micro manufacturing. Um, it, it's it's a it's like one of the victories of this um, of this really bad situation. And um, you know, do you do you see that um, that the the rise of you see a rise in, in the future? You know, once we're back to somewhat normal, that uh, do you think that the micro manufacturing activities have gained a have gained a, a, a foothold in in the, the manufacturing ecosystem? Do you think they will continue? Uh, what what's your thoughts about that? A hundred percent, and I think that we may see um, two or three different models. Um, for example, with businesses. We've already kind of seen it in a small scale where let's say you've got a global company um, and they've got 150 locations across the world and they all have the same 3D printer. Mm -hmm. And so when somebody needs, when, when there's a design change to something or something needs to get manufactured, instead of you know somebody making thousands of this part and then they have to ship it all over the country, they just do digital distribution to all of their locations that have 3D printers and then everybody prints the file. They all have the same profile and everything and then it's done. So in, this, in the smallest scale and in the private, that's, that's already happening. Um, you talk about um, 3D printing for social good. That's actually something that, that Matter Hackers has been involved with for probably like four years. We do design challenges from time to time. Um, and then we, uh, we put the, the files online and people can print them. So we've done them for, um, uh, for people that have issues with their hands, <clears throat> um, designing assistive devices. Um, we've done it for 
um, tactile models for education for students who are blind and visually impaired. Uh, we've done it for teachers. Um, we did a, like a design challenge for curriculum that has to do with 3D printing. And so now I think that when you talk about um, doing a volunteer-based distributed 3D printing um, for something like an emergency response, we can do that now um, if there's, you know, an earthquake or if there's a fire or if there's, you know, something um, where there's a fix that is decided that this is really useful. Locally, people can, you know, you just publish that file online and then locally could, people can just start printing it and distributing it like we saw with COVID. Yeah. But I think there's also an opportunity for um, one of the things I'm working on now with Maker Response Hub is actually working with teachers uh, for the visually impaired. And there are three or four models that we've identified that are very useful for students who are blind. And so I, we kind of put up a little Google form and had, you know, a couple of people sign up saying, yes, I would like, you know, a couple of, you know, three or four models of these particular, um, uh, these particular designs. And then I kind of took a look at it, took a look at the Maker Response Hub, found some local volunteers that could print those parts and then got them printed and got them to that teacher. So, you know, you're talking about like, there's the macro level and then there's like the small things that we can just kind of be doing to help each other. And I think that makerspaces especially have such a great opportunity to, um, to use this to really um, be in touch with their community and to really kind of bridge that gap between like just people that maybe aren't tinkerers or don't know themselves to be people that would go into a makerspace, but maybe they have a professional need that, you know, some sort of altruistic uh, relationship can happen um, with, uh, with makerspaces. Maker Response Hub, I really uh, would like to, to be evergreen and just be available for anybody that needs, um, that has a, a, a need for um, people to volunteer for 3D printing. And other than that, just kind of seeing where everything goes and supporting people with distance learning, supporting people through this pandemic um, in any way that we can, as well as supporting our professional clients and our aerospace clients to keep working and keep innovating no matter what our situation is going to be. You know, keeping bringing manufacturing back to America in any way that we can, um, keeping our supply chain healthy by giving people the tools to really produce things. Uh, on the fly and locally. That's what Matter Hackers is, is really working on right now. Well, thank you so, 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 so much. I know that, uh, you know, talking to a few people uh, on video is, uh, may not be the best use of your time. And I really- Oh, I love it. I this really am. I'm really uh, delighted that you took the time today. Well, that's it for this uh, edition of Maker 9601. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks again to Mara Hitner who uh, was so kind to spend some time with me a couple weeks ago. And uh, look forward to more stuff coming. I've got some good ideas. I'm working on some stuff and I uh, hope, uh, hope that you uh, enjoy listening to it and viewing it as much as I enjoy making it. Well, uh, I'll see you in the future tense if, uh, if I'm lucky and uh, hope that uh, everybody has a smile on their face and remember the virus that we all should be spreading is kindness. <laughs>